Good morning, and if uh, any of the individuals who provided us with breakfast are still here, thank you very much. That was a terrific breakfast. We do quite a few of these, and uh, uh, they just did the eggs perfect. So thank you very much if they're still here. Uh, <laughs> colleagues in the legislature, past, present, and I understand we have a few here who will be colleagues in the legislature in the future, and glad that you're here. Um, Mike Waddell has indicated he's going to run for us in Brandon East. I think that's terrific. We have candidates coming forward. So to all of you, uh, fellow candidates, always great to be in the same room with you, fellow members of the PC party, and of course, uh, need we uh, uh, say this, but uh, uh, to the media who are here as well, we appreciate very much that you're here. You're a very important part of this process. Thank you all for coming out this morning. And uh, it is a very beautiful morning. I'm sure there are a few other things that you could have done, like maybe slept in. And uh, we certainly appreciate that you're here. And I think the reason why you're here is because it's a great time to be a progressive conservative in Manitoba. And let me quantify that for you. We have had two successful dinners in one week. That's right, we had one in Winnipeg with over 750 people coming out for a dinner. Then we had one in Brandon, and Kelly, thank you, you and your team for putting on a very successful dinner in Brandon. And then to top it off, we've had this amazing breakfast here in Minnedosa. And uh, it just shows the kind of interest, it shows the kind of momentum we're starting to build as a party. But it gets better. We have had two, or we will have had, two successful conventions in one month. In fact, we just had one about two weeks ago in Winnipeg, the delegate convention, where we changed some of the, uh, the, the constitution for this leadership. And I can remember party officials traveling around the province begging people, saying, please, we need 200 delegates out to meet quorum because we have to make these changes. And folks, over 325 delegates showed up so that we could get the business of the party done. And I suspect from what I've seen in the party, we are going to face another very, very successful convention come April 29th. And it gets better. We have seen since last week, the party membership, the membership of the PC party of Manitoba doubled. We increased it by 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, that shows a party on the move. That shows a party with momentum. And in politics, they always talk about, you know, do you have the big mo? Do you have the big momentum? I would say, ladies and gentlemen, this party has now captured momentum. And with everything that we've seen, we know it's there because the news gets even better. We have now had the second poll come out that shows us tied 41%, 41% with the NDP in the polls. And ladies and gentlemen, that was before one of the worst scandals in, in this province's history where a young child went missing for nine months and the government had no idea. And once that starts reflecting that kind of uh, poor management on behalf of Gary Dewar and the NDP, once that's reflected in the polls, I suspect our numbers will, uh, will increase. We have a lot of things to offer as a party. One member, one vote. What a terrific system. It makes no difference if you're sitting in Thompson having coffee at, 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 at the dinner table, or if you're sitting in the southwest in Melita, or for that matter, if you're in the southeast, it makes no difference where you are in this province. You can be at Maine and Portage. Your vote counts. You mark your ballot and you mail it back. We have seen a tremendous party renewal in the Progressive Conservative Party of Manitoba. The same process that had to happen federally has now happened provincially, and it shows that we are on the move. In contrast, I would suggest to you it's a terrible time to be a doer New Democrat in Manitoba, and let me quantify that as well. I'll tell you where the doer status quo has gotten us. We are now a have-not province. In fact, we are not the best in the West. We are the last in the West. We are the last have-not province. I can remember growing up in Manitoba where they always used to compare ourselves to Saskatchewan because that was really easy. 
Right? I mean, you could always beat Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan has now beat us. They have now become a have province. They have left us behind. That's Gary Dewar's status quo. The Conference Board of Canada, please, these are not my words, the Conference Board of Canada has rated our health care system the worst in the country. Not the middle of the pack, not at the low end, we are at the bottom. And if any of you have traveled our roads and highways and byways like the candidates running have, rather than fix a road, we've come up with the Manitoba solution. What we do is we get these huge lit signs and we say, caution, reduce speed, poor roads. That's Gary Doerr's idea of infrastructure. You just put up a sign and warn people. Uh, we, we were driving back from the PAW, and I, I'm sure my fellow candidates will agree at times that you, you do get a little bit weary traveling all the time. And I thought I would just close my eyes a little bit and, and the driver would have to all of a sudden say, bump. And you need to, to brace yourself because there was another bump in the road. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not how you build a province. And it gets worse. One of my colleagues just mentioned it. We have a $21 billion mortgage on this province. And I use the example, I have three little children, something like what we have here at the table. And my kids will come to me as your children will come to you, whether it's your children or your grandchildren, and they'll say, let me get this straight. We have some of the worst roads in the country. We have some of the worst health care in the country. Post-secondary education, McLean's Magazine, always ranks us down amongst the lowest. And that, for that, $21 billion mortgage, that's what we get. That's the best you and your generation could do. You foist upon us a $21 billion mortgage, and that's it, Dad? And then you wonder why our young people are leaving the province. I've met a lot of the Russian Germans who are, are immigrating to Manitoba, and they have a great saying. And they say, no money, no problem. No hope, big problem. The way we are going with Gary Dewar and the NDP is they are stripping our young people of hope because our young people do travel our roads. Our young people do access our education and our young people do look at our health care and they look at it all and they say, there's no future, there's no hope. We are losing our young and our educated. And I decided to stay in this province and raise my family my wife and I made a conscious decision to stay in Manitoba because I believe in Manitoba and I don't understand. Maybe you can help me. A province so rich in human resources, a province so wealthy in natural resources, how is it that we are so deep in debt? How is it that we're a have-not province? I would take our hydro patch any day and stack it up against Ralph Klein's oil patch and we come out on top every time. We have a renewable resource. The money keeps coming. And how is it that we have sold off our birthright? The debt on Manitoba Hydro alone is over $6.4 billion. And that's going to be the inheritance that we give our children, thanks to Gary Dewar. Ladies and gentlemen, as I travel this province, we've been spending some time on the phones. Last night we did a lot of phoning. The question that comes to me, so what's next? I present to you myself as a candidate who in 1995, uh, my, my first child was born September the 1st. September 3rd we had the family photo and by the 8th of September, 18,000 brochures went out and I went out and I worked hard. My wife would come with the baby in the back seat, she would bring, us lunch, bring me lunch. I would sit in the back seat with my wife and newborn baby and we'd have lunch in the back seat of the car. And that's how we did supper. For six weeks, I worked hard and I won my election as school trustee overwhelmingly. And I did that again for re-election. And my fellow trustees rewarded me by making me chairman of the board. In 1999, 
Springfield was targeted. Gary Doerr came into Springfield and worked it hard. And I won the seat by 49.5%. And I realized that I had won. Chances are I might win again. But instead, I went out and I worked it hard. In the last six months before the election, I knew we were in trouble. I sent out 47,000 pieces of mail because I believed we would be in trouble. And the people of Springfield rewarded me with a 64% margin in my seat. That's the kind of work we're going to have to apply in the next election. I offer you a young guy who's got a real passion for this province. I believe in Manitoba. You have an individual who's got legislative experience. I ask you to support me, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you.